guys and welcome back. Today I am going to show you guys all of the books that I've read in the last quarter. I do this video four times a year and today I'm talking about the books that I read in July, August, and September. A lot of the physical books I borrowed from the library or from family so I only have three books actually with me today. I'm excited to go through everything and kind of recap give you guys my thoughts on each book that I've read and yeah, I'm in a new setup today. I'm on my bed, which you guys normally see when I'm filming in natural lighting. This is like in the background of it. I don't know why I decided to film in here today. Anyway, that's where we ended up. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and let's just go ahead and get started. You guys know I love reading. It's one of my most favorite things to do and I've really made a point of keeping track of everything I've read this year. It's actually been really fun to do. Before I would just read and not keep track of the books that I've read but this year I have like a running list so that at the end of the year I'm gonna know all of the books that I read in 2021. Referring to my phone so I have the list of the books here but the first book that I read which was for one of my book clubs and it was called My Dark Vanessa and the author was Kate Elizabeth Russell. This was a book that I don't think I would have read if my book club hadn't chosen it, but it was a really good read. It was a hard book to, to get through. Emotional and sexual abuse of a teenager um, who gets abused by their teacher. It's really a dark topic. It's it definitely was a book that I struggled to get through. It's told from the, the girl's perspective. She was 15 when she met the teacher and it, it kind of follows her life from 15 till 30 and basically see what the abuse did to her ment mentally and how it impacted her life as an adult. It was a really insightful read for sure, but something that was a bit challenging to stomach. I'm not gonna lie, I had a lot of trouble getting through that one. It's kind of frustrating because she doesn't really see that it's abuse that she's going through and she kind of tries to justify it and it's just it's frustrating but by the end when she comes to that like realization of what actually happened to her it was really good I really liked the end of that book so that was the first one that I read a lot of the books actually that I read this quarter were really dark I don't know why I finished The Silent Patient by Alex oh my gosh Alex Nicolaitis I think that's how you say his last name this one wasn't a good book as well it was really really exciting it's kind of a mystery thriller psychological drama I actually finished it and I think in the span of five hours I like sat down one evening and read it until 12 30 at night and finished it because I could not put it down and that barely ever happens to me. Actually, I don't think it's ever happened to me where I had to read a book straight from start to finish without putting it down or taking a break. It was that exciting. But then after I finished it, I was kind of like, well, I'm not going to read this again. Like I got the twist. It was not like a good enough book that I want to go back and read it for the writing. So it's kind of like a one-time read. And I'm really glad I did not purchase it because of that. Like I'm not going to read it again. I do think it's going to make a really good movie so I think that's in the works at some point which is exciting because I feel like it's going to be such a good thriller especially if you don't know the story and you're just sitting in theaters like it's going to have that Gone Girl style to it I think. It's really honestly such a good psychological thriller for sure. Um, I would recommend it but I don't recommend buying it because like I said I'm never gonna read it again. It's very exciting. I did enjoy it. I also finished, which was a little bit bigger for me, but I finished Dr. Zhivago by Boris Pasternak. This is a really good book as well. I really, really liked it. It took me a while to get into and I didn't like it as much as I liked War and Peace or Anna Karenina by Tolstoy. I feel like Pasternak, I don't enjoy his writing as much. And a lot of it actually I had trouble following. I don't know really why, I think it was maybe just jumping from stories and perspectives and I kind of had a bit of trouble following it but it's still a really really good story. It's classified as a love story but I almost don't really think of it as a love story. It's more a tale of like resilience and perseverance. I also like the movie with Keira Knightley in it. It's probably not the best version of the movie, but it's the one that I watched and liked. It did take me a while to read though. It was just, I think, a bit dense, so it took me a little bit longer, but definitely worth it if you're into these types of stories and epic novels. 
historically epic novels, I would say read this one. And then another book that I finished for my other book club was Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. She's the same author who wrote Little Fires Everywhere. And this is actually a book that I don't own, but I really want to buy it because I loved it. I liked it more than Little Fires Everywhere. I think for me, Little Fires Everywhere, like when I read it, I did like it. But then on second thought, I feel like she was almost trying too hard with that one. Whereas Everything I Never Told You, which I think was her first novel, just felt more genuine. And I think maybe I related to it more as well because it's about a half Asian family. Like the dad's Asian, the mom's white, and the kids are half Asian. So it's pretty much the same as my family. And I kind of relate it to it more because of that. It's not a happy book. It's kind of very steadily sad and depressing from start to finish. Like it never really gets to a happy point. It's kind of just miserable, honestly. And you don't really like any of the characters that much. There's maybe like one character that I did like, but because I think it was so relatable to me, I really enjoyed it. I really liked it and I want to purchase it. Another book that I don't have, but I read it for my other book. I'm in three book clubs, so this is for another one of my book clubs, but this is The Brief and Wondrous Life of Oscar Wow. This book is by Juno Diaz. It follows the story of a boy from the Dominican Republic who then grows up, and I think he grows up in New Jersey. I mean, it wasn't a bad book, I would say. It's, it's very well written and it's a good literary piece. I just didn't relate to it very much. And you don't have to relate to books to like them, but for me, it was just almost too unrelatable that I couldn't really understand it. A lot of it is in Spanglish as well. So at least that's what the author describes it as, is Spanglish. So it's kind of a mix of Spanish and English and there's a lot of cultural things that I didn't understand. And it really goes deep into the history of the Dominican Republic and the dictatorship by El Jefe, which I can't remember his name, but they call him El Jefe in the book. And I did learn a lot about the Dominican history that I had no idea about because we never learned it in school. The book taught me a lot about that. Like I did honestly like that part where it went into the history of the Dominican Republic because I learned so much, but then it just, I felt like I couldn't connect to the characters as much. I didn't really like many of the characters and I just found it a hard book to get through for some reason. And it was also very like dark as well. Like so many horrible things happen in this book. I do think it would make a really good movie. And if they do make a movie, which I really hope they do, I would definitely go watch it. Cause I can just see it as a movie and the flashbacks when it goes and talks about Oscar's mom, when it focuses on Oscar's life. And then when it focuses on the sister's life as well, like it kind of goes into those three stories from the main characters, the mom, Oscar, and his sister. It was very focused on like nerd lore. So it had a lot of Lord of the Rings references. It had a lot of Doctor Who references and a lot of the superhero references. It just had a lot of like nerd stuff in it, which I really liked because Oscar is like a huge fan of nerdy things. The only thing I couldn't really get was all the video game stuff because I don't watch I don't play video games, but I did like the nerd references. I liked learning about the history of the Dominican. So it was an interesting book. I just don't know if I would ever read it again. And then I also read, which was one of probably my favorites this quarter, not surprisingly, was Far From The Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy. This is my own copy and I love this book so much. It immediately went onto like my list of feel good books. It's so good. I really, really like it. And I love the movie as well. I watched the one with Carrie Fisher in it and Matthias. I can't pronounce his last name, but I love that man. He's Booker from The Old Guard and he is just... It's the story of a kind of a poor, poor shepherd called Gabriel Oak and then Bathsheba Everdeen who inherits... She's poor at the beginning, but then she inherits this huge wealth and a farm and it follows their lives. Plus she has two other suitors. So you have like three men who are pining for Bathsheba's love. And it's very, it's a very good feminist novel, I would say. Bathsheba's a very strong heroine. I do appreciate what Tom Hardy I think was going for, which hopefully was, you know, women's rights and their right to run a farm and not having to be just like the housewife or the, um, the mistress of the house. Like she really, took over the farm and I loved that about it. But then I didn't really like her character that much. I definitely liked Carrie Fisher's 
Carrie Fisher, oh my god, her name is not Carrie Fisher. Carrie Mulligan. I don't know why I was thinking Star Wars. Carrie Mulligan, I liked her portrayal of Bathsheba, like how she acted Bath Bathsheba out. But in the book, I didn't like Bathsheba that much. And I don't think it was really fair because Thomas Hardy didn't give us too much into like Bashba's thoughts, I guess as well. He focused a bit more on Gabriel, which I did love because I love Gabriel. He's like one of my favorite strong male characters in literature. I really, really liked his character. He was just like a good man from start to finish. But I found that I was comparing the two of them and then I ended up liking Gabriel more than Bathsheba. It's definitely a book that I'm going to reread probably over and over again until I die and I really enjoyed it. It's just one of those feel-good books that I'm going to come to when I'm either feeling down or it's a rainy day and I want something really comforting to read. Last book that I read this quarter was The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon and I loved this book so much when I read it. This is my own copy as well. I ended up purchasing it and I read it for one of my book clubs but I'm really glad I ended up buying it because it's just one of those types of coming of age novels that I love. Like I'm a huge fan of coming of age like Catcher in the Rye, Perks of Being a Wallflower, those style of books and this one is right up there. It's a little bit more serious, I think. Main character Christopher, it's not explicitly said, but it's implied that he has autism and he's on the spectrum. And um, somebody actually enlightened me in the comments of one of my previous videos saying that the author didn't actually do much research into autism. He kind of wrote this novel just after reading a few articles on autism and then he based his whole character off that. It's actually very harmful to autistic people and because of that I kind of like the book a little bit less because I'm really disappointed in him for not doing the research and I'm not too familiar with autism. I don't really know anyone with autism so I didn't know too much about it. I can see why this is very concerning and harmful if the author didn't do his research. I still really like the book. It's hard for me not to like it because it was just, Christopher is so endearing. I just really enjoyed the book and the characters. So it's so hard for me now to think of it because I'm like torn. I would recommend it, but just go in with the knowledge that it is not an accurate representation. But anyway, um, that's the last book that I read and that sums up this video. Now I'm reading Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship, the first one, and oh my god, it's so good. I forgot how good that book is. It's been a long time since I've read it. I think I read it when I was like in grade eight. So it's been a long time. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you like this kind of book series. I'll probably keep doing it next year as well. Thank you guys as always for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos and I'll see you in my next one.